Hello again Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNA quick quiz here for you and kind of an unusual list of items here. We're going to go down the list in just a moment. There are two items that you can't see. And can you figure out what in the world these have in common? Well, they don't really have a lot in common, if anything, but what I want you to tell me about this list is which of them, and select all that apply, which of them absolutely require a reload of the router in order to take effect. And let's go ahead and look at the full list here. We've got the IP address of a loopback interface, the configuration register, the OSPF RID, the RIP version number globally, the RIP versions sent and accepted on an interface, the EIGRP AS of a router, and then finally the next hop IP address of a default static route. So if I rewrite a default static route, do I have to reload the router for that to take effect? We will take a look at that and a little bit of extra lab work on a live Cisco router in just a moment. Thanks so much for, again, making me the number one instructor at Udemy.com, the world leader in online education, and for making my CCNA Video Boot Camp one of their best-selling courses overall in 2012. We've actually gone over 9,000 students in my courses out there. And right now, if you put in the coupon code BULLDOG60, on my CCNA video boot camp, you get in for $44. That's less than $2 an hour, and almost 2,200 people are in there right now taking advantage of it, and you need to join them. So let's take a look at this full list of items up here, and we'll start from the top. We'll just leave it right there. The IP address of a loopback interface, you don't have to reload anything in order for that to take effect. Now the configuration register, let's bring a live router up here take a look at it and we'll go ahead and run what command to see what the config register setting is little pop quiz for you show version it's real easy to miss too because you got all this information up here and you got some great info here in the middle what the uptime is you know uh, return to ROM by power on what your image file is and where it is etc but then you have more on the end now if you look for your config register setting up here in the top you're gonna go blind because you need to hit the space bar and look at the bottom and see it's 2102 right now. So let's go ahead and just change that. This is not a recommended setting for your equipment, so don't use it. OX2112. Now I hit enter, nothing happens. I don't, get, I don't even get a message saying that it went through. So let's go ahead and run show version again and see what happened there. And you'll notice it says that it's still OX2 and O2, and it will be this setting at the next reload. So I will change that back before we do the next reload, but I just want to illustrate to you there that you do have to reload the router in order for the configuration register change to take effect. Now, the OSPF RID, let's take a look at that, and we'll look at the same router and show IP OSPF. You can see the very first line is going to tell us 172.12.123.3. So how do I do this again? How do I change the router ID? I go into the OSPF process and use the router ID command. I'm gonna set it to all threes like I like to do in my labs. Now it does say reload for this to take effect, but it says reload or use clear IP OSPF process. And that's why I did say which one absolutely requires a reload. Uh, this one doesn't absolutely require one. You're probably going to do it, uh, but you could just clear the process, which of course is going to bring your adjacencies down, but it doesn't reload the router. So actually, you probably use the clear IPOSPF process option rather than a reload. But again, you could reload it, but it's not absolutely required. Now, with the RIP version numbers, whether you do that globally with version 1 or version 2 under the RIP process, or you actually go on the interface, and change it on an interface level, uh, you don't need to reload anything for those changes to take effect. They'll take, they'll take effect immediately. The autonomous system number on a router, on an EIGRP speaking router, you don't need to reload or anything. Of course, you're going to lose your adjacencies if you don't change the other numbers on the other neighbors, but you don't have to reload it for the local router's AS to uh, change. And then finally, if you overwrite a default static route just to change the next top IP address, 
uh, or really for any reason. It's just like any static route. It's going to be on the router immediately. You do not have to reload it. So the only one here that you absolutely need to do the reload for is the config register, although we know now it is an option with the OSPF RID. That is today's CCNA Quick Quiz. Again, check out my full list of Udemy courses at at udemy.com slash u slash Chris Bryant. Plenty of free courses there as well. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA and Udemy part of your CCNA success story.